On this episode, I sit down with my friend Craig Rizzoli, and he is the founder of a company called High Speed Daddy, and they make bags specifically for men with children. One of the biggest takeaways that you're going to get from this episode is not only learning about Craig's journey and creating something really cool, he's a uh, veteran, he's a business owner, he's also a father of three kids, and, and how he did this, but also how he established this company based on some guiding values to help keep men uh, more connected with their families, more connected with their children, and to just show up stronger, whether that's at a soccer game or whether that's at the gym or wherever they are in their life. And that's kind of what the mission behind High Speed Daddy is. It's not just to provide incredible bags, which by the way, those products are amazing, and they are very specific to the unique needs that we as dads have but they also help us uh, with our mindset and really kind of helping us be, you know, you know, not showing up with that pink bag with the broken zipper and stuff falling out of it. But uh, yeah, you'll see, you're gonna enjoy this episode a lot. Craig's a, an awesome dude and uh, really excited about his work and uh, how he's changing families and bringing a whole new level of uh, products for men. All right, everybody, I want to welcome you to this episode of Close Quarter Dad. And today, I'm really happy to have on board my friend Craig Rizzoli. And he is the founder of a, an incredible company that we're going to talk about today called High Speed Daddy. And uh, my goal for this conversation today is to really not only be inspired by another entrepreneur and someone who has started something cool and has gotten, has been able to integrate their passion a bit of their own personal unique identity uh, as a father, as a veteran, but to also create something that's very useful for our specific type of person, which are men who have children who are getting after it in one form or another. And we really have to count on the, you know, the things that we carry with us, whether there are bags or whether it's, you know, pieces of equipment, you know, for me as an outdoorsman, I really have to invest in my footwear. I was having this conversation this weekend. You know, I am not going to buy a piece of footwear that's going to last me, you know, two years and then go buy another one. I need to have a, I need to have a piece of footwear for a specific job that's going to last me no less than ten years. And I think we have uh, that type of product with High Speed Daddy. That's what I've witnessed with Craig's products myself firsthand. And I'm really looking forward to stepping stepping into that conversation and why that is critically important. So, Craig, welcome to Close Quarter Dad Podcast. Thanks, Adam. I, I, dude, I am jacked to be here. Uh, we, we, we've we only talked uh, and known each other for kind of a short time. I know we met about a year ago, um, but, you know, just in that short time, uh, you know, things are awesome, and I'm so happy to be here and, and tell my story. Cool, man. So let's uh, let's get started. What was the um, – what motivated you – you know, I can tell that you're a pretty creative individual, so there's probably a lot of that juice behind it. But why specifically more tactical-based, um, you know, high-quality, ultra-durable bags specific for men with children? Um, it, it, this full transparency, um, selfishness, <laughs> and, and and let me explain that. So right on. Uh, I was working a corporate career. Uh, my background uh, is mechanical engineering. Um, corporate life, uh, I was in the military part-time uh, in the National Guard as an infantryman uh, in the Army. And uh, as much as corporate life, I, I was doing well and succeeding at it, it was just not a great fit. So I was that typical guy and father that said, I'd, I want to start something of my own, which a lot of us do, right? And so through, through kind of selfishness, um, I was looking for something to do myself, you know, something to get out of the rat race, uh, to be at home. At the time, I had a three and a one-year-old married for five years or so. And uh, as great as it looked on paper and up front, you know, white picket fence and all, um, deep down, I just wasn't satisfied, wasn't happy. So wanted to do something else. Uh, so I, I, you know, research entrepreneurship and what I wanted to do. And I'd been doing that for years, just blog posts, reading books on it, filling what I said, w what I would call the brain bank, just kept putting stuff in knowing that one day I would start making withdrawals. I just didn't know what day that is and on what type of product or, or things along those lines. So 
uh, I came across a, a video or article on, you know, basically how to sell on Amazon. And I said, well, my background is new product development. I can develop a product. Um, you know, I, I've done project management. I can organize all this. I can, you know, work with suppliers. Uh, but a few things lacking. One, how to sell it, how to market it. And, and two, um, uh, basically what that product is. What's the idea? You know, what do you want to do? Yeah. So, you know, through another part of that community that I was looking into, kind of how to sell on Amazon, I came across something that was called a touch list. Uh, and that touch list was basically from the time you woke up in the morning to the time you went to bed at night, everything you touched that day, you write down on a piece of paper, your bed sheets, your toothbrush, you, you kind of you kind of see where I'm going there. And you're going to come up with hundreds and hundreds of items. And then through some uh, a list of container criteria, um, narrow that down to something you're, you're passionate about, something you think would sell well, something that you could improve upon, uh, modify. And then through various softwares, do your research into how does that currently sell on Amazon? Is there a product like that that sells on Amazon? Um, does it sell on Amazon? And uh, the listing doesn't look good. And you think you can improve upon that. So there was a whole bunch of little things there. And even without a lot of that stuff, uh, passion uh, around creating a brand, not just a product, but creating a brand was kind of something that was important to me. Uh, to have it meaningful, uh, to be able to help people, not just sell a product, but to have it be useful. Uh, someone would actually find value in it. So I took two passions of mine uh, that I felt very strongly about at the time, uh, one being the military and two being fatherhood. And I merged those together to, at that time, create uh, a military-inspired uh, backpack for dads, essentially a military-themed uh, diaper bag. That's what it kind of came out to. Um, upon some further research, found there was a couple companies that were, were doing something like that, which discouraged me at the time. But uh, something in my gut that said, investigate this further, look further. And uh, that's what I did. I went really far down the rabbit hole on those other companies, who the owners were, how long they've been selling the products, what the backgrounds were of the owners, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I basically came to the conclusion that one, I think I have a better story. Two, I think I can develop a better product. Um, and, and the third thing was the gut feeling that said, do it. So that that's how I launched High Speed Daddy. And uh, the kind of the nickname around or, or, or definition of High Speed Daddy I came up with at the time, um, it's kind of a play on words in, in the army uh, where someone you call them, hey, high speed, you know, is someone that's a little bit more advanced in something, someone that puts in that extra effort, someone that's, without being too cliche, the special forces of, of something, the, the person that's airborne qualified, the person that shoots uh, 100% on the, uh, on the uh, you know, um, uh, shooting marksmanship test, uh, the person that excels at physical fitness. You kind of label them in jest as like, hey, high speed. You kind of, it's a little derogatory, a little bit comical, and a little bit, you know, congratulations like you're actually doing really well so uh, basically applying that to fatherhood and that's what i wanted to create the brand around is i wanted dads to be the best that they could be um in that pursuit uh you know like i said as cliche as cliche as it sounds be the best you can be right um you know one of those things uh but you know that's that's what the original mission was when i created that product and a brand around it and i mean we you can go into a lot of detail from there, but that was kind of the, the, the initial, um, stepping into those, into those shoes. That's pretty cool. So, you know, I had, uh, I just shared with you as an, as a person who spends a lot of time outdoors, I have this thing that I have that I've carried with me maybe for, phew, I have to date myself here. It's definitely been about 30 years and I call it the courier test. And, um, when I select, gear specifically around bags um which are really important to me which is why i t was totally stoked to get you on board with the summit and to have this conversation with you um because i do a lot of bike packing mm -hmm. and 93 i rode my bicycle by myself across north america via canada awesome uh, and it, yeah it was it was cool but um i went east to west against the prevailing wind so i learned the hard <laughs> way a lot of mistakes uh, which I want to talk to you about too, because I'm sure mm -hmm. you've learned a lot of hard, um, you know, made a lot of mistakes in your work. Of course. Uh, but you know, I learned 
I learned the value of stitching. I learned the value of uh, zipper, you know, zipper failure. When you know, when you're facing a huge downpour and you're out in the middle of nowhere, uh, you want your zippers to work. You want your flaps to work. You want your gear to like be, you know, you get you get a seam that blows and you're out in the middle of British Columbia. You're screwed. And I know that that's not what a high speed daddy does, but what it did for me, also during that time in my life, I was a bike messenger, right? Mm -hmm. So when Timbuktu came out. It was like, all right, cool. Here's a bag that's fully encased and waterproof from the from the belly up. Mm -hmm. So as I'm spitting up water from my from my tires when I'm riding, this is going to protect the, the content and the files that I'm uh, you know I'm delivering as a bike messenger. So if, yeah, so from that point forward, I was also looking for a quick quick release shoulder strap, and I needed padding right here because I was always slinging it around my front. I'm sure you probably mm -hmm. had a lot of that experience mm -hmm. with military bags, which probably inspired much of your Absolutely. designs. So now when I go to a now when I go to a bike shop or I go anywhere and I'm looking for a, a, a bag or I put it to the courier test like is it I'm not just going to grab something and so many bags say oh this is a courier bag no it's not a courier bag and no that's not a bike pack no this is this this is just something that's made and so I have these very specific needs that I have for my bags and I always put them I know exactly what I'm looking for um, and I'm curious what are what are some of those elements that you discovered as a parent and I could share mine I'm a father of four but what are some of those elements that you um, you incorporated into the design and the engineering into your bags that make them unique to you know if I go and get like for example Maxpedition mm -hmm. uh, sling bag I love I love that bag but you know there are certain things I might not use it for but I would have loved to have had that when my toddlers were bouncing around but then there are certain things that would have been useful so I'm kind of like let's step into that discussion a little bit and talk about some of the unique qualities that the high speed daddy products offer dads oh yeah absolutely I, I nerd out on the on the gear aspect of this right you know my, my product development background right on, and stuff yeah. like that so I'll, I'll take the step back um, and a lot of that has to do with the specific use case, right, which you just went into, you're looking for something specific as a courier bag, you know, and, and what you mentioned about the water slinging up from the bottom instead of people are used to rain coming down from the top is this, is they designed that bag, the Timbuktu bag, after a specific use case, right? So we want to do the same thing for fathers, yeah. um, specific parents, let's say, um, but from a different aspect of we didn't want to create a bag that looked like a diaper bag which if you go to amazon right now and just type diaper bag the first 50 bags all look exactly the same plus or minus feature colors and stuff like that we wanted something to be a little bit more discreet because we found out through research that while dads don't mind carrying a diaper bag you know um usually the mom does first off but second is uh, we wanted dads to get more involved and to connect more with their families. And we figured that if they had something aesthetically and because we're men, gear-wise, that worked you know, and was useful and added value and solved problems, that it would bring dads more into the equation. Uh, that's one. Two is it probably provide that dad with a little bit more confidence. If you know specifically, specifically from the work you do, that if a male is more confident in any situation, he's probably going to prevail in whatever he's doing, right? So, you know, we figured That's the right. confidence aspect. If he's wearing a piece of gear that he likes aesthetically, it solves a problem, stuff like that, instead of walking around with something, and I'm not saying this to emasculate people or this or that or, or whatnot on a masculinity talk, but if he's carrying around a purple and pink flowery, small, you know, not greatly designed product you know backpack let's say it there is a part of them where as much as we want to say like i don't care i'm carrying it for my kid and this and that and blah 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 and it's my wife's bag and I'm, I'm i'm a male and who cares you know i'm alpha blah 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 but there is part of it on their head that's going i don't really like this bag this you know this is not my style uh you know i i would have i would have wanted to buy something different and there's not that much out on the market right so closing a, a loop that we started there we did our research into what guys are kind of like, what kind of products, and we have a military background, and we kind of went into basically that tactical scene. We said if, if guys are walking around with kind of a tactical-looking backpack um, that has certain key features that my wife's diaper bag had uh, that I was carrying around for the first two kids, or for the first kid, and now we have our second, 
um, you know, what does that look like? What are those features? And we came up with four key features that we needed to include in a, in a normal backpack, uh, per se. But four key features are wipes pouch, you know, that we have insulated pockets for milk bottles, whether it's warm or cold, um, or, or, you know, uh, snacks that you wanted or, or, uh, you know, milk you wanted to keep warm, breast milk, things like that, or other water for you that you wanted to keep cold. So work both ways. Uh, stroller straps. You want to, you don't always want to carry this thing. You're pushing a stroller. There's no reason to basically carry it on your back. You can attach it to the stroller and keep pushing it along. Or let's say you want to go play on a playground with the kid or something along those lines. You don't want to leave the backpack on a bench where someone could grab it and run away with it because there are bad people in the world that do these dumb things. Attach it to the stroller. Um, or to whatever else is around that you wanted to. And the third is a changing mat. So those are f four key items that we said, if you have a baby, these will help you and, and solve problems and make your life easier over a normal backpack. Now we can go into the other cool stuff of, you know, wh what does that backpack look like? How big is it? What kind of materials is it made of? What type of zippers does it use? How many pockets does it have? You know, things along those lines. And basically what we found is a lot of the diaper bags on the market were specifically designed for a baby. Well, I had a three and a one-year-old. My three-year-old was still in diapers, just getting out of them, but still in diapers. I had a one-year-old, you know, who, who's obviously in diapers, and they said, we need to make this bag a little bit bigger. So we didn't want to go too big, right? Because then you're, you're slugging around all this stuff, and we know people uh, tend to follow, a, you know, what we call Parkinson's law, which is whatever, you know, space you have, you will expand to fill that space, whatever, you know, basically if, you know, if you have a hundred dollars in your wallet, you're probably going to use that hundred dollars real quick. You know, one of those things. Um, so that's Parkinson's law. So we don't want to make it too big, but it can't be too small. So we got to carry enough for basically two, maybe three kids, something along those lines. Number of pockets. Here's the military thing that came in. Every pocket has a specific use case, right? There's an SOP that we had in the military in a, in our unit. This, the tourniquet goes in this pocket, the quick clock goes in this pocket, the, the, the power cord goes in this pocket, you know, et cetera. The, the extra knife goes here, the extra flashlight goes here. Everything's specifically designed and goes in a specific pocket. Well, we decide to do, probably looking back on it, too many organizational pockets in our backpack. But we wanted everything to have a specific case. This is where uh, the diaper rash cream would go. This is where the extra pacifier would go. This is the clip for the keys for the car you know, things along those lines, um, zippers. Now, again, full transparency. When we launched the bag, I did not think that we'd have, uh, some zipper issues like we were. Um, and in the beginning we did find out through customers that are saying, Hey, we're having a couple of zippers. It's getting hung up here. We're doing that. We did a quick flip on that one and instituted YKK zippers right away. We paid the extra money for it, lost a margin, didn't care because we wanted to do the right thing. So, you know, after, after year one, instituted the YKK zippers across all of our products, solved those problems. We were good to go. YKK zippers, if you, people don't nerd out on it like I do, I'm in the industry, and I'm sure, Adam, you're very well aware of it as well. YKK are top oh, yeah. out there. Uh, not cheap either. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we, we did that. And you're using the heavy ones too. Yes. Yep. So um, materials. We went with 600 denier waterproof polyester. The main reason for that is because it was – just below the the material that I had as an official army issued uh, assault pack, and the reason we didn't go with the thousand denier instead of the six hundred denier uh, is because a thousand denier it's heavy. We realized that you know ounces equal pounds. That's one of those things when we're rocking along and packing for a mission. We pack, try to pack on the minimal. We want to take extras, contingencies, risk mitigation, but. We wanted to make the product not too heavy that, you know, you're carrying around a five pound bag empty, right? No, people out there, the most of the people out there that were going to use this product, were not used to rucking around with something, you know, <laughs> so they weren't used to going on expeditions, but we wanted it to be durable material. We wanted it to be material that was scratch resistant, abrasion resistant, and then we instituted a, a, a water resistant layer to it as well, right? So... You know, it's, we, we don't have specific waterproof zippers. You're not going to submerge this thing and pull it out and, you know, be like, you're good. But if you're caught in a rainstorm, your things inside are definitely not going to get wet. You know, things along those lines. Um, so we went with the 600 denier water, 
uh, water resistant polyester instead of the thousand denier, like the bag that you know I was currently using uh, as an army and salt pack. Contoured shoulder straps instead of straight straps, straight shoulder straps, right? Contoured so that it's a little bit more comfortable coming underneath and things like that. You could wear it longer. Uh, you know the padding that we had uh, has airflow design, not just a straight pad down the back. Um, you know you do get sweaty as you're carrying backpacks around that therefore the airflow gets in it. Sure. Uh, we also, uh, put a, put a, I don't want to call it a concealed weapon. Um, a concealed weapon pocket, although some people do use it for that. Uh, I'd say it's more like, let's shove your keys. If you want to put your keys in there more so for the wallet passport, things like that tucked in, tucked in the back Velcro issue real quick. Um, little designs like that for people that wanted to hide some things. So we, we, I mean, there's more features than that, um, of our bags, uh, because the other thing behind saying that we are going to come out with this awesome daddy durable military inspired diaper bag was kids are only in diapers for about three to four years. You have four kids, right? That's you right. know, this most diaper bags after that time, trash. We said, no, this bag is built to last. We put a lifetime warranty on, you know, we want the, we want people to get a second life out of these bags for whatever they want, want it to be used for. And we were talking about specific use case designs and bags and stuff like that. This is, we want it to be an all around bag, you know? So we tried to institute as much as you could in certain areas. If you want to use it as a travel bag, you want to use it as a school bag. You want to use it as a hiking bag. You want to use it as a work bag. You want to use it as a gym bag. You want to use it as a hunting bag. It's, it fits all these things in a certain criteria so that after your main use case, which was use it as a diaper bag, three to four years later, it's still durable. You you spent money on it. Keep getting your, your use out of it, right? Give it a second life. What do you want to use it for now? It's good for that as well. This is how you can do it. We can help you along with that too. You know, we have people that use our bags for all sorts of reasons. You know, it, it's, it's actually really, really cool. The, you know, different things that we've seen and different pictures that people have given us back with what our bags are used for, even from the get-go, <coughs> excuse me, you know, from people that buy our bag just because it's an awesome multi-use, multifunctional backpack, even though we designed it. Do as you have a any cool bag. examples? Um, the ones I listed off <coughs> are, are mostly what people usually buy it for. Um, some of the coolest things that I've heard, and it could be just boring, but just the fact that, you know, I, I've had buddies that have used our bags, <clears throat> excuse me, on business trips as a carry-on bag that'll pack it for seven days, one backpack with all their stuff. And this is, you know, yeah, they're going to use their, their slacks more than one day in a row, stuff like that. <coughs> but, you know, it's, it's one of those things that they, people are getting so much use out of it. And in, especially, like I said, that second life that they can, you know, use it for so many things. I mean, I have guys that are using it on construction sites. They carry it in as their work bag. They attach, they use the stroller straps. They attach it to a ladder. They're doing like, you know, electricians are using it as literally tool bags. Um, you know, people that have used it for fishing trips, hunting trips, you know, things along those lines. Um, but just the, the, the wide variety, which is really cool to see that. And, you know. Uh, you know, a little pat on the back. That's just one product. That's one product line of ours, right? We have several product lines now that yeah, we've transitioned to into yeah, and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. And accessory pouches, like you've seen our first aid kit, um, accessory pouch that which can also be multi-use, multifunctional. You know, uh, I'm not sure if you thought about it or you, you know, things like that. I use that as a hygiene kit, as a travel. You know, if I'm traveling yeah. somewhere over the weekend, a quick plane ride, toiletries go in that pouch. It, it either attaches to the backpack, you know, through the Molly, uh, yeah, the Molly webbing and Pals webbing, which you can weave it in, yep. uh, which is a, uh, which is another military design thing. Uh, or you can just, you know, stick it in the, you know, in our bags and you're good to go there. So, yeah. I have your uh, first aid kit. Mm -hmm. well, I've got mm -hmm. uh, that. And what I've used it for is I have it as my in-home first aid mm -hmm. kit that I keep in my medicine cabinet yep. for fast grab. Yep. But then uh, the whole kit, you know, the whole kit is in two Ziploc sandwich bags. Mm -hmm. I take those out, and then when I'm traveling with my ten-year-old daughter, I take her pencils, and she's got all this art, oh, this awesome. little art kit that she has, 
and I just slam yeah. it in there. I zip it up and I clip it right onto my backpack and we're gone. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she's got, she just will sit next to me in an airport or whatever. And she'll just take out her pencils and put them back there. So the multi-use is just it's spot on, man. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's been really cool. I mean, the, the, the backpack took off from the get go. Um, you know, like I said, we had some competitors yeah. already uh, and um, you know, there, there's, there's still competitors now and there's a lot of people that have come in and try to, you know, take over with our design and changing little features and stuff. And, and I give them respect. Everyone's trying to do their thing. Um, and there's a bit of flattery yeah. into there as well. Like I created a great product and, you know, they want to try to sell the same thing. Um, you know, and it is what it is. It's capitalism, you know, whatnot. But there's a bigger, you know, I was just, I was nerding out on, our gear there on the design and the product itself, but there's a bigger mission that we have behind this stuff, you know, which is, you know, helping men provide, protect and connect, you know, type thing. We, we kind of say that about our community, you know, helping parents on the go, but the connection, you know, the, the provide, protect and connect is very important to us. And we found out early on after, you know, like I, I kind of said, the selfishness of the story, I want to sell a product. I want to get out of corporate, this and that. I quickly realized there was a need in the market to support men and fathers, um, you know, and, and try to help them through that transition in their life and the stress and anxieties that they were dealing with and trying to provide for their families to figure out how to protect their families, which you <laughs> you know all about. Um, and then at the same time, connect with their families, you know, um, instead of being the dad that sits in the car when you have your studio running and a class going on, to be inside and actually know what's going on so that that father can then take the skills that you just taught their kids, evaluate it, and help their kids work at it at home, like homework, right? Instead of sitting in the car, fumbling on their phone. That's our connection that we want to talk about and things like that and help help men through. Um, and unknowingly, we found out early on, um, as I was you know, creating some blogs about my trials and tribulations of fatherhood and being in corporate and also being in the military part-time and being away from family and this and that, that uh, there was fathers out there that had the same exact trials and tribulations that I was going on. And when we launched a product, I had a, I had an email list of 60 people and you know, social media presence of like 500 maybe or something like that. And I started getting some stuff in and there was one email that came in early on uh, and I, I distinctly remember it was the first email. Um, I had an email list. I, I sent out a blog, and I had someone that replied back and said, thanks, this is exactly what I was looking for at that moment. I'm going through the same problems. You know, keep doing what you're doing. That was outside of the product. I'm a product guy, right? You know, but I was like, oh, I'll just talk about my story a little bit and stuff. At that point, I realized there's a bigger mission behind just selling an item here and trying to create a business out of Absolutely. that. Absolutely. There is a bigger mission. And then I, from that point on, as much as I'm a product guy, I leaned into that mission. We got to help dads here. We got to help men, you know, and, and, and figure this out. We got to try to reduce divorce rate. We, we have to try to reduce emotional mm. and unfortunately physical abuse that goes on within family. You know, like those type of things is what we really want to strive to fix and help out and get dads more involved and, and help them recognize triggers and help them work through uh, anger issues, depression issues, anxiety issues. And, and we, we, we dive into all those things through High Speed Daddy. Yeah. As well as selling some That's badass amazing. cool gear. <laughs> right on, right on. So, so Craig, you know, I see that you guys are also – um, stepping into actually instead of dads, but kids gear too, mm -hmm. gear for kids. And um, tell me a little bit about that. And I'm asking for kind of a sort of a, a I don't want to say a selfish mm -hmm. reason, but um, I had some ideas as a gear guy myself years ago. And I had a, I had this burning question in my head. And uh, much like you, the uh, back when Amazon, you know, I ran a couple of uh, uh, Amazon businesses that actually won Amazon weird as it sounds, it's grew into a whole nother business with two of my partners who bought me out and it became something massive and not even on Amazon anymore. It's in the real estate education space, okay. which is not anything I'm involved in. So, but I have experience like in that, like, and, and, and I, once I realized the power of being able to use these different channels for sales, I was like, okay, what can I, can, what can I create that I'm good at, that I have touch points with, like you said, 
that is meaningful? And a big question came to my mind. I want to ask you that question after you share with me um, like the, the, how the genesis of kids bags came about and where you're going with that, because that's really interesting to me. Yeah. So it, it was always an underlying mission, not to, not to just help dads, but to help the whole entire family. Right. Um, so whether we ever get there, we, we, we go, you know, we have plans and this and that, but we, you know, you still take that one day at a time, that step forward, you eat the elephant one bite at a time type of thing. We're working on high speed daddy right now. We have full intentions, and whether we get there or not, we'll see what happens. To to launch a high speed mommy version, to launch a high speed oh, junior cool. version, high speed pet version under the mm. high speed family of products or something like that. I'd love to create an Eddie Bauer style company that actually gives more shit about the family than a corporate company like that, right? Um, putting yeah, on sure. events, having people come in, doing retreats, like big hairy audacious goals right b hags that's that's a high that's that's the secret recipe anyone wants to try to steal it so be it i'm putting it out there into the world if you can perfect it better than me god bless you i'll come work for you you know um but that's part of the goal because what i found out specifically through um our poncho liners that we launched the poncho liner is a lightweight water resistant blanket that we used in the military we call it a whoopee um when I launched that product, which have been, has been out there for decades, and I said, you know, I want to launch these because at the time there wasn't a lot on the market, but I also want to launch them in a kid's size. Because the first thing I used to do or would happen when I came home from military weekend, I'd have my, my, my Woobie and I'd, I'd go wash it or something like that. Is my kid would see it and he goes, cool, blanket, right? Like three-year-old wants to be like dad, wants to roll around in dad's things, wants to be just like dad. Totally. I yeah. said, I'm going to develop a blanket. It's going to be a Woobie but it's going to be a legit, would be a legit baby blanket. And I created a couple different sizes, you know, for toddlers and for babies and stuff like that in the same material so that basically you have the daddy or daddy and me, you know, type thing. Um, and now we've transitioned that to some other products like our lunch bags. So you have the daddy lunch bag or adult lunch bag and you have kids lunch bags, but they're all in the same kind of aesthetic because I, our kids want to be just like us. They want to steal our stuff all the time they do right Wh whether it's good or bad sometimes yep. they steal stuff and they shouldn't you know take things out of, out of certain drawers and you're like hey no you're not old enough to use that yet you know things along those lines that we've all been through but you know if they have that same aesthetic that same you know style um thing that we have it, it does kind of bring you closer together and that's the connection aspect that we're striving to to have within the family so that's that's the bigger mission behind it besides it's just it's a cool thing when you see like a kid walking around with, you know, kind of a tactical inspired item. You don't see that very often, you know, it's uh, it's really neat to see that. Yeah. And I mean, you've got girls colors too on those bags too. Yeah. So it's yeah. Not so just, you know, yeah, exactly. So I mean, material, material wise, it's the same um, changing the color up. So it's kind yeah. of give the girls a little bit, uh, you know, something they're, they're kind of flair to it. I've got two girls. I mean, I didn't even go into to family here. I've got, you know, uh, older boy and two younger girls. Uh, my son will be nine in August. Uh, middle one just turned seven, and my youngest will be four the end of this month. So, you know, I've I've got two younger girls that are also all about high speed daddy and our gear because you know they've been around since they were they were born essentially. <laughs> yeah. Right. Wow. So w the reason I ask that is because I you know as, as a father of four kids. There's one thing that has always bothered me, and that's every school year I have to go out and I have to drop about two hundred dollars, north of two hundred dollars, mm -hmm. on new book bags, mm -hmm. and new lunch mm -hmm. bags, and all that because the bags suck. Yeah. You go to you know whether you go to Walmart or you go wherever you can get wherever the kids' bags are, um, and they use and the kids are brutal. Oh yeah. All year long, you're throwing them into the locker, throwing them off the butt, throwing them, throwing them, throwing them, and. Uh, I, I said to myself, why aren't we teaching our kids to have one bag and treat it like it's their, you know, it's one of their most prized possessions and it gets them through at least four years. Yeah. And why aren't we giving them something that they're going to love, something that's durable, something that they can count on, something that they take care of, but that also something that's going to help them in a pinch. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was always wondering, when is a bag company who does durable, 
strong tactical type gear going to make bags that are more family oriented mm -hmm. for for that for, for use cases like what you're talking about and i thought about you know when it comes to you know children are lost the first thing they have to do is safety then they have to signal then they have to then they get secure and i'm like why can't we have you know bag flies that come off from the bottom like you have a lot of backpacks mm -hmm. right where they yeah, go over top. the top neon orange for signaling or, or you know things where you open it up and on the inside it has like all the steps that a kid needs to take if they get lost it's right there in front of them um and i had all these ideas that were processing and i'm like, like why is nobody doing this why is nobody creating use case bags for kids that are going to last them for years and it's so good to see that High Speed Daddy is actually has, uh, you know, we're the first ones to step into a more family-oriented, yeah. strong, durable products like this. Yeah, we're 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 trying. It's you know, we 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 have some designs. Uh, we do have some prototypes out on yeah. on backpacks and stuff like that for kids. Um, again, giving away the secret sauce and whatever you know stuff about the future and whatnot. But um, it's it's doing that that research, making sure that we can launch as as best as we can. You know, there's some resources and stuff that play into it um but sure but yeah it's it's but then it's also soliciting the information because there's certain things that you just mentioned there that i didn't even think about right so that just tells me that we have to kind of broaden our horizons and talk to more people about not just what we think and and certain members of our community but even going now further you know and, and you're talking about you know some sars stuff um you know it instituted into that and i'm going that is definitely something that would be awesome, you know? So that's something I'd love to have further conversation with you about, you know, on that side and who knows, you know, maybe can join, joint venture this, you know, so it, it'd be really neat. Let's do it. Yeah, totally. I'd be, I'd be happy to share anything about that. Um, tell me a little bit about, uh, some of the, um, some of the mistakes, Craig, that you encountered as you were developing this, not, not necessarily technically, you shared mm -hmm, like the zipper mm -hmm. thing, or, but like the actual evolution of that, what are some of the things that you bumped up against and what are some of the great takeaways and, you know, just things that you're like, yeah, man, this, this really helped me evolve as a businessman mm -hmm. and as a father. Yeah. Um, let's see. There's so many rights to pick them out. Okay. So something I've always <laughs> <laughs> abided by in high speed daddy, um, is that good is good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. And what I mean by that is when we launched mm -hmm. our product, and I, you know, I just told you before, we had a email list of 60 and stuff like that. I didn't know anything about creating an email list. You know, I'm, I'm sure like you didn't either. There's a lot of e-com stuff that I did not, I was not aware of. I always knew about and sold stuff on eBay in early years. I knew Craigslist when it launched and sold stuff on Craigslist and did little things like that. So I, I had little dabbles in there. But... I didn't know how to create an, a landing page and institute MailChimp into a custom WordPress site that I bought a domain from SiteGround and, you know, and, and institute all this myself. And I sure as hell didn't have the money at the time to pay someone to do that all. So we bootstrap, right? But I wasn't going to get hung up on it has to look perfect. It has to be the best photography to get that out there because a lot of people get hung up in all those details and then the analysis by paralysis and they get fear from that and then they just give up, right? My thing was, let's get it working. And if it's working and functional, that's great. That means we can move forward onto the next item and then circle back around and make it look pretty later on. But if it's functional, that's cool. Let's move on to the next thing because we have a long list of shit we got to get done. Right? And by, by we, I mean like me, myself, and I. You know, so it's one of those things. Uh, so, I mean, the initial photography that, that we went forward with for our product photography was literally an iPhone 7 a white sheet ba background and me like taking tissues to like stuff pot pot pro, um, <laughs> stuff pockets to like make the pictures kind of the product look good had shadows the lighting was fucked up you know like it looked like crap it like i wouldn't get any attention nowadays on amazon but you know five six years ago you can kind of still get away with a little bit but i got it out there i got something going People were interested in the product, and they looked past the photography, right? And then I could circle back around and make it pretty later on, you know, learn how to kind of cut out around it and things like that. There's a lot of bootstrapping that went on, but good is good enough. And then move on to the next thing. The other thing that kind of correlates with that is just-in-time learning. Learn what you have to do at that moment to get that little project or task done, and then move on to the next, all right? You don't have to learn about how to be a CEO of a 
hundred million dollar company when you're just starting out, <laughs> you know, like you're not running a team. There's certain things you need to know about business and whatnot, but you don't need to learn how to be a CEO of 500 employees and read a book on that. While it might be good information for the future, you don't need to know that right at that moment. You need to know about whether you should do an LLC or an S corp, right? Or something along those lines right. and what yeah. the difference is between the two. Little stuff like that you need to learn in the beginning. Um, but and the, but that carries out throughout the products. What do I got to get done? Is it photography today? Okay, how can I take this better angle picture or something like that? Get that done. Shoot all the pictures. Upload them. Get them in place. What do I got to do for tomorrow? Right? You know, so it's one of those things that I call just-in-time learning. I'm not, I'm not saying that just-in-time is, is my thing. I'm sure I stole that from someone else. But that was something that helped me a, a lot along the way. The other th thing, and probably the third thing, is uh, the the learning how to deal with that setback, with the failures, um, and how to not get discouraged, but how to use that as a force to go forward. Um, how to how to use it positively, you know. Uh, quick example: COVID. You know, March 2020 happens. We're selling 85% of our stuff through Amazon. Amazon decides to prioritize essential items to be shipped out. Our revenue gets cut down 80% in one day. Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Now what? You know, do you sit there? Fight, flight, or freeze sets in immediately. You know, you have a team. You're operating. You think about OPEX. And that's something you, you got to sit with for a day. That's not one of those, like, as soon as it happens, you're like, oh, well, I had a plan for that. Yeah, <laughs> no way. No way you had a, had a mitigation plan set up for a, a March 2020 COVID hit, right? Um, so what we did have in place, and this is just as an example, um, you know, after sitting with it for a day, what can we do? What are our options? Let's list them out, et cetera. Okay, we can still sell stuff. We can't, they're not fulfilling it. All right, who can fulfill it for us? Do we have an external warehouse? We do have an external warehouse. Do we have external shipping connected to Amazon right now? No, it's not right now. What needs to be done? Here's just-in-time learning. What needs to be done to get them turned on? Do they have someone at their site? Do they have the right API? Blah, blah, blah. Yes, okay, let's get that going. Two days later, we were back up and running and having our external warehouse um, fulfill sales from Amazon we're back up 60%. Might not have been where it was, but it's something it's it's pivoting, right? You know, what can we take out of this bad yeah. situation and learn from that? Well, we had we always knew the external shipping was an option, but it never in, in all that Amazon theory, let's say. And 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 I I mentioned Amazon a lot because it's a bulk of our business, but we do sell uh, off in other channels as well or our own website and stuff like that. But you know, learning from that and instituting that external shipping now gave us another source that if we ever ran out of stock on something in Amazon, which happened kind of frequently in the early years, um, that we now had a backup. So even though we ran out of stock here, if our external warehouse has um, has fo uh, inventory, they automatically step up now and they can start filling. So we have no lag in sales now, you know, where we would just run out of stock, be kind of shit out of luck for a little while stock back in something along those lines um so this was actually a great thing that came out of that and instituting that and getting that up and i don't know if we would have had the motivation to turn on that external fulfillment because it was a little bit lower on the list that was back burnered because <coughs> we were doing other things so you know that's something good that came out of it and the other thing that kind of correlates again to to that is again like i said how to deal with those setbacks what kind of things are you doing proactively to help you deal with, with bad mindsets? You know, are you meditating? Are you, are, do you know how to deal with these things? Are you doing any breath work? Do you know what breath work is? Do you know how much it can help you? Are you exercising? Are you keeping yourself in good health there? Because being an entrepreneur will run you ragged. It is not for everyone. I'm sorry. Oh, I'll, yeah. I'll put that right out there. It is not for the majority of people, you know, on, on our planet because they don't know how to deal with these things. And I didn't know how to deal with them in early years as well. You know, it took talking to other people, you know, reaching out to, to others, leaning in, you know, what are you guys doing? Well, I, I have an extra, I have a morning routine. What the hell's a morning routine? 
you know i i have a night routine you know how many people you know say i have a morning routine but do you have a night routine do you have a shutdown routine for your mind and everything to get you calm and relaxed and not getting the blue light in last thing at night you know are you setting yourself up and journaling the night before and setting your priorities for the next morning so everything goes together there these are little tips tricks and hacks that you kind of find out along the way to help you navigate your your body because burnout is real and that shit does happen especially when you have a couple businesses and a family and maybe you were still in the military part-time at the time and stuff like that and i had a lot of that going on i was stay i still am a stay-at-home dad i say that's my first job and the businesses that i run are the side hobbies that (laughs) help support being a stay-at-home dad but that's my number one priority i put kids on the bus i get them off the bus you know we unfortunately maybe fortunately we'll see how your community reacts to this in 10 minutes we have to cut short because i gotta go pick up my four-year-old from preschool you know and she'll be with me the rest of the day and i'll be you know in and out you know when she takes her nap later on i'm back to the grind right here and get my work blocks in and things like that so absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah, I'm, I'm glad you said that about the uh, the evening r- rituals. You can't have a morning ritual unless you ha- it's it's backed on an evening ritual mm-hmm. because things just break apart. And that's one thing that I'm really, really strong on. Craig, before I let you go, I have, uh, and I know I want to be sensitive of your time. There is, I just want to unpack a couple of things that you shared with us. And um, you talked about sort of that dad showing up at the soccer game. And he's got that pink backpack on and he's got that baby blue cooler with a blown zipper and he's just carrying all this stuff. And, you know, I, I, it immediately, I, I thought of, you know, that book by Glover, uh, No More Mr. Nice mm-hmm. Guy. And then I thought about uh, Napoleon Hill's, uh, you know, his dress for success and his mindset training, where really, like, your mindset becomes uh, what you're wearing mm-hmm. and how you're showing up to that game. And if you are constantly carrying something that's broken and it is not you, then that creates, as you shared with us, it creates ripple effects oh, yeah. that can become much larger yes. concentrically later on. So, you know, I'm, 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 as, as you're speaking this, I'm like, wow, how much difference can a freaking bag make mm-hmm. in the life of a man? Mm-hmm. And what does that mean with their relationships and how they show up to the game, how they show up to life, how they show up for their family? Those little things make so much of a huge There's difference. There's a lot of subconscious and, uh, stuff that, that goes on there. Absolutely. You know, and, yeah, and it, if you think yeah. of, you think of, I like to think of our products a little bit like a, like a totem or, or an anchor, let's say an anchor. Uh, if you think about the, uh, you know, Tony Robbins style, ner- you know, NLP, neuro logistic processing, right. Or mm-hmm. programming. Um, I want, I want dads optimally to every time they see our backpack, it clicks in their mind, whatever funk they're in, they had a shitty day at work, whatever it might be. They come home, you know, mm-hmm. ugh, I gotta, you know, first they should have, a, a transition routine going on before they you know get out of the car before they get in the house they should have something like that automatic but they walk in the house i want them to see a product of ours and something click in their mind like an anchor that i need to show up and be the best that i can be right now for my family you know one of those things just snap them out of it you know it's almost like the rubber band effect you know every time you you say a bad word you flick yourself after enough pain you're not going to curse anymore you know so it, it's right. one of those things and if i could you know, think of our products like that. And and if one person, one person in our community or customer of ours using our products like that, it's freaking worth it. It is worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Craig, just quick, you're a friend of yours. Their family has a baby. You go to visit her in the hospital. You're walking out. You're on your way to a meeting. You're leaving the hospital. You're walking past the birthing center. You see a new dad looking in the window at his baby on the other side of the glass. And uh, he catches your eye. You catch him as you pass him. And he just kind of smirks and he says, it's my first one. And you can tell he's going through that thing that we went through of like, how am I going to protect this? How am I going to pay for this? How am I going to, how am I, how am I going to, and you just stop. You kind of appreciate that moment. You, re, you know, reflect back when you just first became a dad and you got one minute to share with him just a little something that he's looking for. Like got any advice from you? You can tell he's waiting to hear something from you. What is that? You're going to go through a roller coaster of emotions and it's all okay. It's all natural. You're not the first to go through it, and you're not going to be the last. People before you have figured it out, and you will figure it out as well. Just whatever you have to do, take your deep breath, be there, be the rock your family needs, 
and you're going to be just fine. Like, it's very simple. Very simple. Yeah, the wisdom is in the simplicity. That's awesome, mm -hmm. man. Thank you so much. Um, how do we contact you? Obviously, highspeeddaddy.com. Uh, where else are you? How can we get some of the information that you're putting out there? What are our contact? Yeah, contacts? yeah. So I'm, I'm all over social. Uh, Instagram, um, at highspeeddaddy. Facebook, at highspeeddaddy. Uh, I'm more, I, and all messages come personally to me. I, I'd love to be that much in the weeds with our customers that all dis, uh, DMs come directly to me. I'm more so on the Instagram side. So cool. Instagram DMs, if you message me on Instagram, it will be me returning a message. Um, that's probably the, the biggest thing. But we also have a, uh, a private men's Facebook group for any dads or men in general that want to lean in and uh, talk a little bit more. I, I kind of hate saying the word safe space nowadays, but that that's a space where, where guys can lean in. You're not going to be judged. And there's a lot of great information in there. That's uh, on Facebook at High Speed Daddy Provide Protect Connect group. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, and I'll throw my email out there for That's anyone important. that wants their, you know, wants to lean in a little bit or, or has questions uh, of anything we talked about today. It's Craig at HighSpeedDaddy.com. Great. Yeah, Craig, I might also say that if any of our listeners aren't already part of a, a men's group or a dad's group, there are several of them out yes. there. You know, Craig and I are both mm -hmm. involved in Dad Edge Alliance, and that has been a life changer for me through my darkest moments. Uh, and if you haven't had that type of uh, ability to lean in, and yeah, I know we kind of kick that word around safe space, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of value to that, to that, especially, you know, you can't lone wolf it. And if, if the high speed daddy uh, group that Craig just mentioned, it's, you just go there and, and join there's, you know, you've got nothing to lose, but if you're, if you're facing some challenges, this might be a great place to just dip the toe in the water when you, when you need some, you know, you need some support or some guys to listen to. That's a, it's a great thing that you're doing, Craig. I really appreciate it. Uh, Adam, I, I, I love being on today. I love talking a story. I know it's, I, I truly believe in my heart that it's, it's a great mission um, and well worth it. And we're, we're going to continue to do and try to help, you know, not just guys out there, but just families in general, right? Uh, people in general, it's uh, something absolutely. I love helping and giving back and, and things along those lines. So thank you so much for letting me talk about it today. You got it. Craig Rizzoli, thank you so much for, first of all, your service to our country. And thank you for just that one little thing that you're doing through your business, the work that you're doing with High Speed Daddy to help men feel more comfortable and uh, help their families stay more connected. Uh, I appreciate you, and I'm looking forward to continuing this conversation with you uh, into the future, brother. Awesome. Appreciate that.